It's due for Tuesday, and I'm ready to give a report on these Voss deeds, mainly this one here. This was the exclusive, well, not so much exclusive, but it was a, I guess you could say more of a sprint run. It was a limited edition. The blade steel on this is LMAX. Now, I carried this knife now about five weeks, so I'm ready to give a report on its edge retention and just how it performed over that time. One thing I can tell you is that the shape of this knife has been great. That downswept blade has been a really, really useful utility tool. This knife has been great for no matter what I've done with it, whether it's been cutting food, breaking down cardboard, doing some whittling. It's just everything I've done with this knife, it's excelled at. Now, I used this knife for about two weeks with the factory edge. The factory edge was very sharp. It was very good, but there was a slight burr on it. So before I started using it, I touched it up just a little bit on a ceramic stone and then on a strop. And I carried that for, like I said, about, about two weeks or so, two, two and a half weeks. The factory edge performed very well. I broke down a mountain of cardboard with it. We got in at work eight new computers plus monitors and everything you know, other accessories to go with it. And I broke down all the boxes. I didn't just break them down. I cut them up into small pieces so all the cardboard fit into one box. So I would expect any knife to be dull after what I put it through. This knife was still cutting very well when I was done with that. And I carried it for several more days without, without ever sharpening it again. Now, after cutting all that cardboard, it would not slice paper cleanly. It still would slice paper so its fine edge was gone, but it was on the working edge. And one thing I do have to say about this LMAX is it, has, it started out very toothy, and it has remained very toothy. I mean, really, really aggressive. You can hear that. Let me bring it up by the microphone. You can hear how it still grabs my finger when I run it over the blade. So I, I really like to steal a lot. Um, I would take this any day over S30V or S35VN. I've never tried S45VN. I don't have any knives in that steel. So I'm not sure what, what to say about a comparison with that. But I seriously doubt that S45VN could perform any better than what this knife does. And I wouldn't expect it to match the performance of this knife. So whatever the, the carbide structure is in here, it's a very nice carbide structure and it it holds and maintains a toothy edge beautifully. After the two, two and a half weeks, I did put my own edge on it. And you can see there is a wider edge bevel on here now. Let me show you the standard version. You can see how much smaller that bevel is. So I laid the edge back quite a bit and it's probably I'm going to guess roughly, roughly 15 degrees per side. And I carried this with my edge for the past, well, about two and a half weeks now. And I have yet, yet to retouch it or yet to strop it back up. It still cuts beautifully. So the edge that I put on here. I started out with a 220 grit DMT bench stone in order to resharpen it, or I should say reprofile it. And I progressed up to 600 grit. Now these are eight inch bench stones, so they make it easy to do a reprofiling. But I can tell you, I know this steel has run hard. I could feel it on the stones. This is above, above a hardness of 60. It's probably, my guess is this knife has run around 61 on this LMAX. So if you have other LMAX, it isn't run around 61 or so. I don't think you could compare it with this. There's probably quite a difference in how the steel performs at different hardness levels. So after going to 600 grit, I used a 16 micron strop, only about 15 passes per side, then an 8 micron strop, same thing, about 15 passes per side. The only use of the strop was just to clean up the edge and refine it. I don't, I don't want to smooth it out. I don't want to take those micro serrations away. 
and I want to leave the edges of the carbides sharp and I want the blade to remain very toothy. A lot of steels as you go finer you'll feel that bite start to disappear. That bite is what I'm after in the steel. That's my preferred finish on the blade. I don't like a smooth polished edge. A smooth polished edge likes to slide off material instead of grabbing it and slicing right through. So even even after this knife lost its fine edge, its working edge still went on strong for a long time. And in use, yes, maybe it didn't cut paper quite as good, but in daily use, you didn't notice a loss of sharpness. And that's what you get from that coarseness and from that very aggressive toothiness that the blade has. So that's what I prefer. And this steel takes and holds a toothy edge amazingly well this is a near perfect steel at least for me and and the uses i have in the way i cut this is the type of edge that i prefer and this l max does a great job with that type of an edge other steels that i really like are s90v m4 crew wear now I've I've had no problem with S35V and I have a bunch of cold steels in S35V and, and that has performed great but this is better. So I've have not been able to get this thing out of my pocket. It's been in my I've carried this 7 days a week for the past 5 weeks. And I am not looking forward to putting this aside, but I am going to put it aside in order to test the standard model. Same knife, but only has the thumb deployment hole, doesn't have the flipper tab. So as you can see right now, I'm manipulating this thing left-handed, and it is no problem to work this. A lot of liner locks, you can't, you can't close easily left-handed. This one is no problem at all. Of course, everything, everything for a righty is much easier right-handed. So I'll be carrying this one for the next, you know, five or six weeks. And I've never used Nitro V. So I'm very curious to see how this performs. I can also tell this is treat, heat treated on the hard side. And as I tap the blade, I can, I can hear that ring in it. And even when I run my finger across, can you hear that ring? Typically blades that are heat treated on the hard side have a ring like that. And also ones that are ground thin. And these both are ground pretty thin behind the edge. So I expect pretty good things from this. I do not expect it to match LMAX. It probably won't even come close to what the LMAX does. But it does have a very nice toothy edge. I touch this up on ceramic just like I did that one. I didn't strop it though, I just did the ceramic. And I'm gonna try this and see how it performs. I have some more cardboard to cut up and some more testing to do. And I wanna see how this LMAX compares with the sprint run of the Nightshade. So we'll pit this um, Nitro V up against that LMAX and we'll see how it goes. These are two great knives. If you can find one of these specials one of these sprint runs in LMAX I would highly advise you to pick this one up these are a great knife I mean that angle puts that blade right down where it needs to be for utility cutting without bending your wrist when you're slicing something let me get something here when you're slicing something it keeps your hand up above the surface so, I mean, this has just been a great knife. In every, every way that I've had to cut this shape, it may look a little bit aggressive, but think about um, a sow belly stockman. You always have that one blade that's curved down. Now, one of my favorite knives has always been a Mannix II. This is a Mannix II lightweight. This is one that I drilled out to rivets and converted to screw type construction and put an S90V blade in it. I love these translucent blue scales. But if you get a good look at this thing, 
It's not nearly as severe, but you can see the blade is canted down from the handle. I'm holding the handle level and you can see that blade is on a downward angle. And when I go and I look and I find all of the knives that I really enjoy, they have that downward cant. Here's another one. This is a fixed blade that I made. Let's see if I can get it in frame here. If I hold that handle level, you'll see that the blade is on a slight downward angle and it also has a continuous curve. There's no straight portion on the blade. Continuous curves cut better. They're always, they always have a shearing action. So that's one. Let me pick this one back up. You can see this Manix 2 has a continuous curve. You'll find the PM2 and PM3 also will do the same thing. Look at the nightshade. Again, continuous curve. So there is something here I see in common about knives that I enjoy carrying and using. There are certain features and certain characteristics that they all seem to have in common. And these nightshades have it, and it's even exaggerated a little bit more. It has a continuous curve with a little extra belly. Where the Mannix 2 is just a continuous curve, it doesn't have any extra belly there. It's strictly just the, the leaf shape. The fixed blade here that I made, that's a continuous curve with a little extra belly and the dropped blade. So I think these features improve the cutting performance of a knife along with a good steel that has a coarse carbide structure that takes and holds a toothy edge. And as the edge breaks down, more coarse carbides are exposed, having your working edge last for a very long time. So these characteristics are great characteristics in an everyday carry knife that you're going to use for real world tasks. We'll see you next time.